Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and welcome to video one of my 2018 Halloween card series. I have had people asking me for weeks when this will start. So this is the first one. Do not be surprised though. These will not be in order as in um, the next video most likely won't be a Halloween video. I'm going to be all over the place for the next several weeks. There's so much exciting stuff going on with Stamp Timber, etc. But I wanted to get a start on the Halloween videos because I have tons of products and tons of ideas. So I have some Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I am stamping the jar, the lid, and the label stamp from the Lawn Fawn How You Bean stamp set. This was released last year or before. I can't remember. It's, it's an older release. And then throughout last year, Lawn Fawn was releasing like add-on sets. So the original set comes with jelly beans. And then there was the Conversation Hearts, which I've done a video on. Um, there is this candy corn set. There's a little star set that I got recently. Like, you know, tons of little options in that. So for today's card, I stamped the jar, the lid, the label, and then I used the candy corn add-on and I stamped the large cluster of candy corn on the inside of the jar. And then I stamped the little individual candy corn pieces, just kind of filling up this piece of cardstock I had. And I also stamped the trick or treat sentiment from the candy corn set onto the label. And I had inked everything up with Simon's um, Intense Black ink, which is a Copic friendly ink. And then I'm going to color all these in with Copic markers. So I'm gonna list the colors I used on the screen. I started with BG10 for the jar and I kind of blended that out with a little bit of my colorless blender. And then for the lid, I just used um, some cool grays. And then for the candy corn, I'm using my kind of go-to yellow combo and then my go-to orange combo. And I started with the yellow. I actually had to Google like what candy corn looks like because just for me, it is just habit to do orange, yellow, white because that's just what I would do. I always forget that yellow is on the bottom of candy corn. I honestly don't think it ma matters that much, but it's kind of funny sometimes like the, you know, random comments I'll get from people like, you did it wrong, you colored it wrong. <laughs> so made sure to do this right. So I started with the yellow since that was the bottom and I just did all, you know, everything all at once, you know? So I did all of the little pieces of candy corn at once working just darkest to lightest. And then I went on and did my, um, the orange little stripe in the middle and that's where I went with the YR09 and then the 07 and the 04. And once I had that in, um, I wanted to add a little bit of shading, but keeping it simple, Just but it helps add that little bit of depth and dimension. Plus it adds something to the little white ends on all these pieces of candy corn. So for that, I used um, BV20, which is like one of my favorite colors, I guess, to add like shadows because it has that, you know, that hint of purple to it. So I just went along and added that to um, all of the candy corn. I also added a little bit to the jar. And then to really make everything pop, I'm gonna take my um, Jelly Roll Wide Gel Pen. This is the Jelly Roll 10. I always link to this when I use it. I have a ton of people asking if I've been putting glossy accents on images when I use this gel pen. <clears throat> and no, I'm just drawing in the highlight. So just added that to all of the candy corn, to the jar and whatnot. And then once everything is colored, I'm using the coordinating wafer dies for the How You Bean stamp set to die cut the jar and the lid and the label. And then I'm gonna use the little candy corn dies from the candy corn um, coordinating die set to die cut all those little individual candy corn pieces. So I'm gonna tape those into place with um, some washi tape here. And then I'm going to run these through my die cut machine, get everything die cut. And then I'm going to start working on the rest of this card, which, you know, looks deceptively simple in the beginning, but there was a lot more to it. <laughs> so I get everything taped in place. I have to run it through multiple times to get all the little candy corn pieces. But the big, you know, piss the resistance of this is the new double slider surprise wafer die. And I'm going to be honest, this is actually the very first attempt 
I even made with this. I watched Lawn Fawn's video showing how to make it and Kelly explains it, you know, really simple. I literally watched her video once and then I just sat down and started making this one. And it, it really is easy. This is my first attempt making a double slider card. This die made it easier and it just watching their video made, you know, putting this together really easy. So I have the um, panel piece, like the inner panel, the die for that. And I've just traced it onto white cardstock. I'll get back to that in a second. I wanted to do some masking because I just, I, it was, again, one of those random ideas that came to my head in the middle of the night. I was like, ooh, a double slider card with tons of candy corn. <laughs> so I stamped a large cluster of candy corn here just onto a stack of post-it notes. Um, you know, any masking paper will work, but I'm just doing a stack of them because this way when I cut um, fussy cut these out to create my mass. I'm actually getting four at once. I wouldn't do any more than that. That's probably the max I would do because if you're trying to cut through too many layers, they start to move around when you're trying to cut them and you're not going to get a good mask. But four usually works and if I have to do more, I have to do more. But four ended up being perfect for this. So I have my masks and I have my pieces of cardstock that I traced um, that die onto and the trace is just a guide for me just to give me a visual of where I want to stamp all these and making sure I have enough stamped onto my cardstock and I'm going to do this um, twice so I'm going to have two pieces of white cardstock with a huge cluster of candy corn on them and I'm just lining these up again into my stamp platform um, I don't need to worry too much about lining up the cardstock it's more just so I can double stamp everything so I don't need to like you know, line up the cardstock so it's perfectly straight or anything like that. And I stamp the first cluster of candy corn and then I cover it with the mask. And then I just move my cardstock around and I keep lowering the lid but not closing it fully just so I can see where it's going to stamp again. So then I can stamp it a second time. And I just kind of um, keep flipping back and forth between these two pieces. It just, it, I don't know, in my head it was making things easier. But you could just do it, you know, one piece at one time. You know, stamp the cardstock, mask, keep stamping and masking, and then do that again with the second piece. It, it doesn't really matter. Whatever works best for you. But I stamped it a second time above the first one, masked that piece off as well. And then I'm just going to keep moving my cardstock around here and masking, you know, stamping and masking until I've completely, basically almost covered each of these pieces of cardstock. But I don't need to fully... Um, cover all of it because I've got that traced line of where I'm going to die cut so all that extra area it's more for when I color it's I'm not as concerned with all the stamping but when I do all my coloring I definitely don't want to color any more than I need to because this this is where it gets a little bit crazy this is something I don't often do <laughs> For someone who talks about it, it's like, I don't have any time and this, that, and the other thing, and I just want to get it done, and you know, blah, 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 blah. I spent a good amount of time on this card. I had so much fun. It was to it, totally worth it in the end. So I just kept going along and masking, um, stamping and masking this cluster. And then um, off camera, I ended up stamping along the top too, because I wanted to fill in the whole thing. So after all that stamping, I got to coloring and this did to do both of these panels with all of this candy corn it did take a while I didn't really time myself I just had you know random YouTube videos etc playing kind of in the background kind of catching up on those my plan is to eventually start doing like listening to podcasts I think that would be I just I haven't got into them yet but I think that's something I would enjoy doing when I'm you know coloring and watercoloring and whatnot but I did the exact same color combos as I did, of course, on the first bits of candy corn. And I did the exact same thing. I did, you know, all like all of one marker at once. So I did all my dark yellow, then my medium yellow, then my lightest, all of my dark orange, then my medium orange, then my light orange. And did that just across both of these panels. I've super sped up. I wish I could color this fast. Honestly, this is literally 20 times faster than it actually took me. <laughs> so yeah, I don't color this fast. I, I sometimes, especially with this, I wish I totally wish I could. But I did all my coloring. I added that last bit of shading with the BV20 marker. Then I went in with my white gel pen and just quickly added highlights. Um, like I've been mentioning lately in videos, I don't 
you know, overly follow rules. I just kind of wing it, especially with this when there's so many. It was like, just add a line. Don't worry about it too much. Don't overthink it. Just add a line in white. It's great. It's good. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> so I added on my little highlights and now I'm going to die cut both of these pieces with this, um, this is the like inner panel of this die set. And now to start making the actual slider or double slider here, you die cut um, one track with the white with any color cardstock. So I die cut one track and then I die cut two of the larger panels that have the fold line on them. And then there's also this little notch die that you can, it's up to you whether or not you want to use it. I wanted to for this because this works perfectly and it's perfectly sized. So it's just like the simplest thing to line up. So I was able to cut all those notches by just running it through my machine, lined up, didn't have to think about it. Again, love that. So I've die cut all my notches. So now I want to finish decorating these panels before I actually get to like assembling the slider. Because once um, you start getting everything adhered, it, I just think it's easier to have these panels just done before you start really like fully adhering everything into that slider. So I die cut some black cardstock with the Lawn Fawn um, Your Sweet line border. Thought that was kind of rather fitting with candy corn, of course. So I die cut it from black cardstock and then I use the multimedium matte adhesive, just applying that in really thin amounts on the back of it. And then I dropped it on my work surface, had to wipe off the excess adhesive, typical. Um, and then I adhered that to the panel that's going to come out from the left. So I adhered that making sure um, that it's kind of closer to the edge because I want to make sure the whole word, the both words are going to be seen when you pull it out. And then um, popped in the little apostrophe there between the U and the R. So that panel is basically done. I kind of wanted to keep these fairly simple since I spent all that time coloring them and I didn't want to cover it all up either. So the sentiments are from the candy corn add-on set. And I just um, white heat emboss them onto black cardstock and then cut them down into strips. And then I have those little um, little tabs, but I'll get to those in a second as well. I was just making sure I adhere those sentiments and that they weren't going to get in the way of the tabs that I'll add later on. So I've got my little sentiments and basically those panels are now done. So to assemble and like actually create this double slider, you need um, some form of plastic, either a plastic bag or a grocery bag. I have these little freezer bags that are really good. Sandwich bags would work. Um, just a nice thin plastic. So don't always throw everything out or recycle them. Some things you can keep and recycle them by reusing them this way. So you just need something that you can cut to two and a quarter inches. The length doesn't matter. You just want it long enough to wrap all the way around. So I did that with my bag and I'll, I, I could make at least six cards from one of these little freezer bags because um, after you cut it, you end up with two pieces. So you only need one. So I have this long strip of plastic here that is two and a quarter inches by however many inches. You just want to fold this over your track here. And then I'm going to apply just a little bit of score tape to the one end of the plastic. And you want to make sure the score tape is just on the plastic. You do not want to tape this to the track. You're only taping the plastic together, nothing else. Cause you want this plastic to slide, which I'll show in a second. So you just fold over the plastic and now I'm going to trim off the excess with my scissors. And it's just the plastic that's adhered together and I, it can slide very easily around my little track. You wanna make sure not to um, tighten it too much cause you want it to slide nicely. So after I have my plastic around my little track, I am going to put more score tape on the very bottom edges or just very edges of these um, tracks here. And this is where score tape, the 1 8 inch score tape is perfect for this. You could use multimedia matte adhesive, but you would have to be very, very careful and really make sure to let it dry. And it's just a pain in the butt. Like highly recommend if you don't have score tape in your stash, get some definitely have the one eighth and the one quarter. Those two are the ones I use probably the most. So I've put the score tape on the tracks on both sides on the very edges. And now I've applied a strip of the adhesive on the left side, right over the seam where I had um, glued the plastic together. And then I flipped my track over and applied it on the left side again. 
And like I said, if I remember, I'll hopefully remember, I will link to um, Kelly's video for Lawn Fawn showing this as well because she explains it really, really well. And she also uses a different color plastic too, so it's easy to see. I'm like, this is all I had on hand that would work. Um, so mine is very transparent and very difficult to see in video, but yeah. Anywho, so I have my track, that line of adhesive, I removed the backing and it's on the left. And I am now lining up my front panel, the one that's gonna pull out on the right first. And then I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to remove that other line of adhesive that's also on the left. And I'm going to press my second panel face down onto that so that it is adhered and just lining everything up. And then it, already it's just, it's starting to come together. And it's just, it starts getting exciting when this works again. I've said um, whatever video I did the other day when I was like, I've never made one of these before. What was it? I forget now. But yeah, for doing this for 15 years, I've never done a slider card. Not, or at least not a double slider card. I did that one um, reveal, color reveal one, also by Lawn Fun, like a year ago. But I've never done a double slider, so this was really fun. So I took my two main panels here that have the score line on them. And I just reinforced that score line with my Teflon bone folder. And then I applied another strip of score tape to one of the flaps, peeled off the backing, and then I'm just going to adhere both of these together, just making sure I've got everything lined up. And then I can just press that flap down and now it's adhered and you can fold it over like so. And then to adhere the track, I have, um, I'm going to peel off the backing from the back of this track, I'm gonna peel off the adhesive backing so that both um, the top and the bottom adhesive is exposed. And then this just lines up right inside this um, outer panel. Press that into place, and then I'm going to remove the bottom little strip of adhesive. Once I remove that, that little flap just folds over and covers that completely. And then I'm going to adhere um, another strip of score tape to that little flap there. And I'm just kind of making sure that everything's still like lined up and moving and nothing's getting stuck. This is again why score tape works so much better. You're not having like, you do not want liquid adhesive like oozing out and like sealing everything together. So now I've applied that line of adhesive. I'm gonna remove the top line of adhesive from the track. And then I just press this over and this is like, this is just so much fun. I was so proud of myself for being able to do this. If I can do it, anybody can do it, seriously. <laughs> so yeah, double slider, so much fun. And it, like you work at it a few times and you can start doing it by just pulling on one side. So just love, 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 so much fun. So these tabs are die cut from a die that comes in a die set. There's different options, like there's different little tab dies and whatnot, just depending on what you're gonna do. So I just die cut these from some black cardstock and I am stamping the pull here sentiment from the push here stamp set. And I'll have links to everything. Um, I'll have a supply list and links to all of it in the description box below the video as well as on my blog. But I stamped that onto them with um, clear embossing ink and then I'm just um, heat embossing these with the detail white embossing powder. And this, it's the same ink and embossing powder and cardstock that I use for the little sentiments that I adhered to those inner panels. So after I had heat embossed the pull here on those tabs, there is a score line down the center of these little tabs. So I just folded those over and then I'm going to adhere these onto each of these little panels here just to have a spot to um, grab the panels and pull them out. So and it also kind of reinforces it too, since I did use just um, Copic, the Nina 80 pound cardstock, so it's not super heavyweight or anything. So I like having, with a thinner cardstock, I like having something like a little bit reinforced since you're gonna be like handling it and moving it. It's not just your typical card where you can just look at it. So added those little tabs there press those into place. And then to actually decorate the front of this, I had die cut the orange wood grain pattern paper. This is from the Lawn Fawn Knock on Wood 6x6 pack. And I die cut it with the panel, um, the main panel from that set. And then I just cut off the little um, folded flap there with my paper trimmer. And then I just adhered that to the front, just using my multimedia matte adhesive since it's just sitting right in front of me. 
And then I'm going to um, create my little card front using the jar and the lid and the label and the little candy corn pieces. So I'm going to adhere the little label on top of my jar. I'm going to adhere the jar into place. And I decided to kind of prop up the lid like as if it was like left open. And just kind of prop it up next to the jar here. And then I'm going to adhere some of those individual little candy corn pieces along the um, bottom of the card. And funny thing is this whole scent, like, you know, this whole card says like, I love you. Um, I love you more than candy corn. And I really love candy corn. And the funny thing is that I don't like candy corn. <laughs> I love the look of it. I like the smell of it. I don't really care for the taste of it. I find it just too insanely sweet. I can have like one piece and I'm good to go. Anyway, um, card base. You can either adhere this whole double slider, you could adhere it to an A2 card or just an A2 size panel or whatever you want. But I decided just to make a card the same size as the main um, piece. So I cut a piece of cardstock to six inches by four and a quarter. And then I squirted it three. So that creates a three inch by four and a quarter inch card. And on the front of it, I put the score tape. And then on the inside, I used, I have the remaining sentiment from the candy corn set. I also have the um, scripty happy wafer die. And I die cut that from this, the remaining bit of orange pattern paper. And then the Halloween is from the happy, happy, happy add-on stamp set. And the same thing, I stamped and white heat embossed that. So I adhered those to the inside of my card along with the remaining little candy corns that I had stamped and colored at the beginning. Now I'm going to peel off the backing from this score tape and then adhere this to the um, double slider. So it's just kind of an extra little surprise, like the slider pulls out, but then there's also a little, you know, card attached to it as well. So that was my finished double slider candy corn surprise Amy R Halloween video for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. And um, if you check out my blog, I will have my blog post with a supply list. I will also have a giveaway. I'm going to give this card away to one of you. So if you are interested in that, um, just check out the first link directly below the video. Thank you all so much for watching and I will be back very soon with another video. Bye.